the the big question was everybody was sitting around and asking us what is form 1099 and what are the instructions so in today's show i want to answer that question i'm giving you irs form 1099 neck line by line instructions how to fill out form 1099 neck non-employee compensation don't go anywhere Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you were to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. In today's show, I want to talk to you about Form 1099 Neck, and I'm going to give you line-by-line -line instructions how to fill it out. So if you're getting started as a freelancer or as your small business is contracting outside help, You've probably heard of uh, IRS Form 1099, right? But what is it exactly? Especially, what is Form 1099 NEC? N -E -C? And how do you file it? So in today's show, I'm going to break down everything for you and I will explain everything line by line. First, let's define 1099, the 1099 tax form. So a 1099 really is an information filing form used to report non-salary income to the IRS for federal tax purposes. So there are about 20 variants of 1099s, but the most popular is the 1099 NEC. If you paid an independent contractor more than $600 in a financial year, you'll need to complete a 1099 NEC. So an individual can also make money from tax dividends, prize winnings, interest income, IRA distributions, state tax funds, miscellaneous government payments, the sale of personal property, or even credit card debt forgiveness. So these types of income are reported on other types of Form 1099, which um, we're not going to cover in today's show. Now, this conversation, this whole show is for you if you are a small business owner. If you are a small business owner, you'll most often be dealing with Form 1099 NEC. So that's the one we're gonna talk about. I'm showing this to you on, I'm showing, right, I'm showing you right now on the screen, a copy of the Form Copy A, that you need to send to the IRS. Now, this is in red. As you can see, everything is in red because you cannot use a form that you download from the internet for Form 1099 NEC because the red ink on copy A is, is a special and cannot be copied. So what you need to do is that you need to use the official form. I will just talk to you more about that later on. So it's very important to, to make sure that you follow the proper uh, procedures and all the procedures that you need to follow, I will be discussing them today. So after defining 1099 tax form, let's talk about the actual form 1099 NEC. So 1099 NEC is the version of form 1099 you'll use to tell the IRS whenever you paid an independent contractor or other self-employed person $600 or more in compensation that's the threshold here six hundred dollars that's the floor rather so that's six hundred dollars or more over the course of the entire year so the irs uses this information to independently verify your income and therefore your federal income tax levels so if you are an independent contractor it's not your job to file the 1099 neck but if you don't receive a copy of the 1099 neck from your clients you should follow up with them and independent contractors will need to report all, all of their income on Schedule C, even if it falls under the $600 range and there wouldn't show up on any 1099s. We have uh, focused on the, 10, on the Schedule C and on another show, so you might want to double check that where we explain everything about Schedule C. So basically what I'm, trying, what I'm saying here is that Form 1099 NEC is a new form for tax year 2020 for non-employee compensation of $600 or more to a payee. And this form should be filed with the IRS on paper or electronically and sent to recipients by February 1st, 2021. Also, non-employee compensation may be subject to backup withholding if a payee has not provided a taxpayer identification number to the payer or the IRS notifies the payer that the taxpayer identification number provided was incorrect. So you always want to double check that TIN, that taxpayer identification number. 
and how do we how does the IRS defines independent contractors this is very important to understand also so please pay attention here an independent contractor is anyone you hire on a contract basis to complete a particular project or assignment so common examples include graphic designers web developers copywriters and social media consultants so if you hire a freelancer through a third-party service you may not be required to submit a 1099 for them let me give you an example let's say you hire a freelancer through upwork Upwork is actually the one doing the hiring, so you don't need to submit a 1099. Same thing for Fiverr. So this is very important, all right? So these details vary from one, 30, one third party hiring service to another. And uh, so all contractors and partnerships who did more than $600 of, of work for your business should receive a 1099 neck. Now let me talk about filling out form 1099 NEC as an as an employer. Who needs to fill it out? If you if your if your business hired the contractor and paid them again the floor six hundred dollars a year, you are responsible for issuing them a 1099 NEC. In other words, the payer fills out the 1099, and uh, the um, of course you already know the six hundred dollar cutoff. If you keep in mind that. Um, if for, let me let me just say if you did less than six hundred dollars of work for a client and never received the 1099 as, as a as a contractor you still need to report that income to the IRS. now do not file 1099s for corporations it's rare but sometimes an independent contractor will be registered as a c corporation or s corporation you don't need to file form 1099 for a contractor registered as a corporation you can see whether a contractor is incorporated based on the information on their form w9 so and that, so you want to request one from any contractor as soon as you hire them and also keep in mind that corporation names are typically appended with uh, ink and never file 1099s for employees either all right so the irs makes strict distinctions between employees and non-employees and they're often on the lookout for business owners who misclassify workers as independent contractors typically in order to avoid paying social security and medicare taxes right so don't do that and you'll need to file a form w-2 to report wages tips and other compensation you paid to an employee during the tax year and uh again there are significant penalties folks i can never over i can never emphasize this enough there are huge penalties for misclassifying employees as independent contractors so you make sure you know how to tell the difference between an independent contractor and an employee before you submit a 1099 and also do not file and i think i just said that before do not file 1099s for contractors hired through fiverr or other marketplaces all right and this is because those platforms they are technically payment settlement entities and business do not need to provide 1099 neck forms to workers they hire on this platform now if you are a freelancer who finds work on this platform you will get a form 1099k if you earn more than twenty thousand dollars and have 200 transactions otherwise you can find all the info you need for for tax filing in your account and uh, if you paid a partnership more than six hundred dollars during the tax year then you must issue them a 1099 neck now all this talk about 1099 might be might sound a little a little uh, confusing. So I'm gonna give you two examples to really clarify what I mean here. All right. So let me give you a 1099 example for small business owners. Let's say you own a small outdoors event venue, Paradise Event Incorporated, and it needs some touching up. So you let's say uh, then you hire a local landscaper to come in and beautify the area. The landscaper works solo, operating as a sole proprietorship. So he comes in and does the job. Everything is fine. The final resort looks awesome and only cost $1,500. So during tax season, it's up to you to send him a form 1099 miscellaneous recording the amount paid, pay him, uh, paid him and the service you're paying him for. Actually, you have to send form um, 1099, uh, um, 1099 miscellaneous, miscellaneous and I'll explain why. And please don't forget, you also need to send him I mean, you also need to send the iris a copy now let's say a winter storm blows in and damages the beautifully manicured front yard and backyards you just renovated 
you realized based on the weather forecast that natural plants may not be a suitable decoration and that it was better to have artificial grass and flowers. So you decide that you want a, a plush, vibrant, but artificial lawn as the cornerstone of your venue. So you call your landscaper from before, but he tells you he doesn't do artificial turf. You'll have to talk to someone with a bigger operation, okay? Now you get in touch with artificial grass and flowers, and they're the they're only too happy to do the job for you, right? And the charge now is 7500 So it's a little pricier than natural grass and flowers, but you reckon that this is a long-term investment. You don't have to worry about sending a 1099 to artificial grass and flowers because they are a corporation, not an independent contractor. Very, very important. Okay. So this is, uh, let me give you another example. Example, uh, 1099 example for independent contractors. Suppose you are a freelance graphic designer and a local outdoors event venue called um, Paradise Events Inc. pays you $1,500 to design their new logo and work on their whole branding. You do the work and they love it. So come tax season, they send you a form 1099 neck just like they're supposed to. Now, suppose you don't hear from Paradise Events Inc. for a couple of years, they eventually, eventually come back and want a light design refresh of their logo, something less flashy. So you get the changes made in one day, they love it, and you bill them $400. In this case, they will not send you a 1099 neck because you didn't do a $600 of work for them. However, you will still need to report the $400 income on your tax return and pay self-employment and income tax on it. Here, what we have here is that the IRS rely most, relies mostly on an honor system. In other words, authorities rely solely on taxpayers' honesty. So it's up to you to report it. And I strongly recommend in this scenario to report the income. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another uh, section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still, I'm still giving you here Form 1099 NEC line by line instructions. How to fill out Form 1099 NEC non employee compensation. So let's just talk about it now. Let's talk about it. There are two copies of Form 1099 NEC. So we have copy A and copy B, right? Actually, there are three. If you count copy one, which is sent to the local state department. So, the, uh, so if you hire an independent contractor, you must report what you pay them on copy A and submit it to the IRS. You must report the same info on copy B and send it to the contractor. And if you are an independent contractor and you receive a form 1099 NEC copy B from a client, you don't need to send it to the IRS. You report the income listed on copy B of your personal, on your personal tax income tax return. You also send copy one to state tax authorities. So we're showing you right now on the screen, we have a copy Form ten the form ten ninety nine neck the copy B which is sent to uh, the contractor and the copy one which is sent to the state tax department you can see on the screen right now so step number one as a payer as a payer as a as a, as, a, as the person paying uh, other contractors there are a few steps you need to follow here step one you want to gather the required information so before you can complete and submit a ten ninety nine neck you'll need to have the following information on hand for each independent contractor. So the total amount you pay them during the tax year, their legal name, their address, their taxpayer identification number, likely their social security number, unless they are a non-resident or a resident alien. So the standard method for acquiring this information is to have each contractor fill out a form W-9. And uh, as a best practice, you should have a W-9 on file for each of your independent contractors. So having contractors fill out a, ten, uh, a um, W-9 should be one of the first administrative tasks you complete after engaging their services. This is very important. This will allow you to avoid penalties down the road. And so you want to check your bookkeeping records to confirm right now the total amounts you paid to each contractor during the, the tax year. So once you have all the all of the required information, you can use it to fill to fill out form 1099 neck. So let's talk about it now, how to how to fill out that form. So you have what you have to include information about your business. So I'm showing you right now on the screen 
Form 1099, and you have to uh, include information about your business for each 1099 NEC you prepare, including your federal I employer ID number, your business name, your business address. You need to enter the recipient's taxpayer ID number, social security, employer ID, or federal tax ID, along with all your business information in the boxes provided on the left side of the page. You can see your nail, right? So each is clearly marked as to what you should enter. So you have a uh, line one, uh, line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So box one, this tells the non-employee. Um, yeah, you need to enter information regarding the payments you've made to the non-employee in the appropriate box. So you have box one. See here with me on the screen right now, box one. This tells the non-employee and the IRS the total of how much you've paid the individual during the tax year. Then we have box four. Box four, you normally wouldn't withhold taxes from payments made to non-employees, but some individuals can be subject to backup withholding, and this would obligate you to do so. So you might receive um, a notice from the IRS telling you that this payee must pay backup withholding, and the non-employee is required to certify in Part 2 of Form W-9 that they are not not subject to backup withholding. So enter any amount of backup withholding you've made in box in box four. Box five, boxes five, six, and seven. So the IRS does not require that you fill in the boxes, but your state departments of taxation might require a copy of the Form 1099 NEC with this information. So you want to enter the person's state income, any state taxes you might have withheld, and identify the state or states to which you will be reporting. This is very important. And you want to complete an additional 1099 NEC for this information if you have to enter data for more than two states because the form only accommodates two. As you can see here, number five and number six, you have uh, actually, uh, right? And uh, the the another thing, one thing I also want to say here is that where do you actually get form 1099 NEC? You can get the forms from office supply stores, directly from the IRS, from your accountant, or using business tax software programs. So you, remember, you cannot use a form that you download from the internet for Form 1099 NEC because the Rec Inc. on copy A is special and cannot be copied. So you must use, you must use the official form. So step three, after you just fill it out, you need to submit copy A to the IRS. What is copy A? Copy A of Form 1099 NEC must be submitted to the IRS by February 1st, 2021, regardless of whether you file electronically or by mail. Now, the, the deadlines are, it's usually January 31st of every year. And for 2021, that January 31st fell on a weekend. So you have to go to the next, actually the next uh, business day. And when you file a physical form 1099 NEC, you cannot download and submit it and submit a printed version of copy A from the IRIS website. As I said, you need to actually, uh, you, you, what you want to do is that you must obtain a physical form. Actually, you can also even go to some post post offices throughout the country to get the physical form 1099 NEC. So besides the office supply stores, the um, by requesting uh, the uh, a copy from the IRS directly or the um, the post office, you're able to actually have a physical form. All right. So. There is no automatic 30-day extension to file Form 29 NEC. However, an extension to file may be available under certain hardship conditions. And um, according to the IRS, deadlines help fraud det 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 detection. In other words, they're able to avert any fraud because the, the, the due dates for information returns like Form 1099 MIS and 1099 NEC help the agency more easily detect refund fraud by verifying income that individuals report on their tax returns. So payers can help support their process and avoid penalties by filing um, the, the forms on time and without errors. And the IRS recommends e-file as the quickest, most accurate and convenient way to file those forms. So after submitting copy A to the IRS, you need to submit copy B to the independent contractor. So this is important and you have to mail it. You have to mail it. Don't just email it. Now, unless the uh, you have a system in place where the independent contractor has acknowledged receipt of the of the form 1099 NEC, you have to mail it. Okay? So 
the and you have to do this no later than uh, February 1st, 2021. Or if uh, the uh, for another year, you have to do it by January 31st in general. If you're late, you have to be, you have to uh, communicate that to the independent contractor. Very important. And you can download and print a version of copy B from the IRS website and send it to your independent contractor. All right. So and, and all instructions are explained in further detail on the first page of Form 1099 NEC. So once everything is done, you step number five, you need to submit Form 1096. If you file a physical copy of Form 1099 NEC, copy A to the IRS, you also need to complete and file Form 1099-6, Annual Summary and Transmittal of U.S. Information Returns. The IRS uses Form 1096 to track every physical 1099 you are filing for the year. So the deadline for filing uh, Form 1099 1096 rather is February 1st, 2021. Now let's look, let's look how to, let me show you how to fill it in. So you have right now on the screen, you can see the form 1099 six from 1096. Sorry for, from uh, the forum is 1096. So you can see here. So you, you put your, uh, your the father's name, you put your company's name, the street address, the city town and uh, zip code. And then you put the you put the name of person to contact. You put your phone number, the email address, the fax number, and you put your employer identification number. Very important. Your social security number if you are a sole proprietor, and you want to put the total number of forms, and you also want to specify federal income uh, tax withheld and the total amount reported with this form 1096. And th and this is very important because the IRS wants to really really reconcile the amount you are sending them with the amount that your independent contractors will be sending them later on. And uh, in box six, where it says enter an X in only one box below to indicate the type of form being filed, you got to go down on the second row. Stay with me here, right? Second row, the third, the third uh, box. That's ten ninety nine neck seventy one. Did you see that? Right, so third box, second row, you have to check that one. You have to enter an X in that box. And uh, then you sign the, you just sign the doc, you just sign this form, you date it and you put your title. All right, so, and I, we are showing you a link to that uh, form 1096 on the IRS, on, on the IRS's website. Step number six, you need to check if you need to submit 1099 forms with your state. So depending on where your business is located, you may also have to file 1099 forms with the state so you can uh, you know this is checking with your cpa and ensure you are compliant with your state's 1099 filing requirements number seven you need to understand how to file 1099s online so copy a you can e-file copy a of form 1099 neck through the irs filing a return electronically system now this form must be produced with the help of compatible accounting software the thing here is that before using fire you need a transmitter control code TCC and you can request a TCC by filling out form 49. The form here is 4419 and then mailing or faxing it to the IRS. And this form must also be submitted at least 30 days before the tax deadline for your form 1099 NEC. Now, in case you need to set up a FIRE account, remember, FIRE means filing a return electronically. This is an IRS system. So in case you need to set it up, here is how to do it step by step. I'm going to do it. I'm going to show you quickly here. And the link, the link to that form is shown on the screen is www.irs.gov slash pub slash IRS dash PDF slash F4419 dot PDF. So the form is shown on the, on the screen right now. So on line one, uh, line one, you put your the purpose of the form, whether it is the revised TCC information or additional TCC request. In this case, you want to actually uh, choose uh, additional TCC request, right? Line number two, you uh, actually um, you put the current transmitter con control code. You have to you should have received this from the IRS, and um, the line three, you put your legal name, the legal name of the other company and uh the mailing address line four employer identification number remember that the uh, your social here is not permitted because this fire system from the iris it's only 
for, for companies. All right. So line five, you need to put the person to contact about this request. So you need to put the name of the person, the position. So folks, we're showing this on the screen. Please uh, stay with me here. So you show the position of the, you, of the person, the email address, the phone number. And uh, you need to actually put on line six the reason why the additional TCC is needed. And uh, on line seven, they see here, check the boxes next to the forms for which you are requesting an additional TCC. So the IRS encourages transmitters who file for multiple payers to submit one application and use the assigned TCC for all payers. You want to check the first, you want to put an X in the first box. Forms 1097, 1098, 1099, 3921, 3922, 5498, and W2G. Only the first one. And uh, on line eight, you need to put what tax year will electronic filing begin. If it's 2021 or 2022, you want to you want to specify that. And number number nine, you want to uh, put an X in that box, so you showing that you have read the effect of it. The 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 uh, yeah the instructions on page two, and you are authorized to sign the documents on behalf of the transmitter and or payer. And uh, Line 10, you need to put the name of the official of the company or organization. You put the position title and the date. Remember that the once the IRS contacts you with your TCC, you may use it to create an account with FIRE. Now, talking about copy B, you can email copy B to your contractor, but you first need their consent to do so. I think I've been saying that before. So if you agree, the IRS wants you to send things by mail. But if you if you're OK with that, if the, the, the contractor is OK with it, you can email it. So consent should be obtained in a way that proves the contractor can receive the form electronically. If you are planning to email them a copy, you should contact them via email to obtain consent. So to comply with IRS rules, your request for consent must include the following affirmation of the fact that if the recipient does not consent to receiving an electronic copy, they will receive a paper one. The scope and duration of their consent. For instance, are they agreeing to receive an electronic copy this year or every calendar year they work for you? How to request a paper copy from you, even if they have given consent to receive an electronic one? Instructions on how to withdraw consent. So the independent contractor may withdraw consent at any time in writing, electronically, or on paper. So you must also confirm his or her withdrawal in writing. Under you also need to uh, the consent must also include under what conditions the statement may no, may no longer be provided. For example, if the contractor's contract is canceled, or if you end up paying them less than six hundred dollars for their services. The procedure that needs to follow to update their information with you. A description of the hardware and software they need to view and print the form. A date at which the form will not be available. For example, if you're making if you're making the form available to download via your company's website, you must tell them at what point in time the form will be removed from your servers. So once you have received consent from the contractor, you are free to send them their copy B electronically. And some services make can make this process less labor intensive, folks. As a matter of fact, you can hire a third party to automatically request electronic filing consent from all your contractors. There are a lot of companies that do this, that provide this kind of services. You don't have to do it yourself unless you have a small team of uh, independent contractors. The larger the team, the better the better move for you will be to outsource the whole thing. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. We are still continue, continuing this journey into a form 1099 um, NEC, uh, 1099 NEC. I want to talk to you now about the fact that you need to know when 1099s are due. So, I think I've said it through uh, the show already. It's January 31st or the next business day if the 31st falls on a Saturday, Sunday or a federal legal holiday. So for 2021, the deadline is February 1st and for 2022, the deadline is January 31st. So copy A, the, uh, the deadline to file copy A with the IRS is February 1st, 2021. If you are reporting payments in box seven. 
copy B. The deadline for sending copy B of Form 1099 to your contractors is February 1st, 2021. And uh, as a contractor, and this is, I'm just talking to you right now, if you don't receive, if you don't receive a 1099 from a, a business, you have to understand it is your, it is basically your client's responsibility to send you a, a completed copy of the form 1099 NEC by February 1st, 2021 or January 1st, or January 31st, 2022. So if you haven't received copy B of a 1099 from your client by the deadline and you believe you should have, make sure you request it. You will need to file it with uh, your income taxes in April. Regardless of whether you receive a Form 1099 NEC, you must report all income earned on your, on your tax return. As an employer, and I'm speaking to you now, so if you miss the 1099 filing deadline, it's not the end. It's not really the end of the world. But you have to pay the following IRS penalties for each late 1099 form: fifty dollars if you file within 30 days, one hundred dollars if you file more than 30 days late but before August 1st and $260 if you file on or after August 1st. So if you intentionally fail to file, you may be subject to a minimum penalty of $530 per statement with no maximum. And uh, the amount of the penalty is based on when you file the correct in information return. If you're not able to file on time, you can request an extension using IRS form 8809, 8809. But this does not extend the February 1st, 2021 deadline for submitting a copy of the 1099 to independent contractors. And also, I want to say one thing. Using a payroll service provider does not relieve you of the responsibility to ensure that the 1099 forms are filed correctly and on time. So, speaking about Form 8809, let's go through this step by step. And I'm showing you right now on the screen, as you can see here. So it's the application for extension of time to file information returns. So line one, payers follows information. I want you to put, I want you to tap in or print clearly in black ink, the payers, the name of your company, right? The address, the city, state, and zip code, very important. The contact name, you want to put somebody whom the IRS can contact if there is a question. You need to put the phone number of that contact person and the email address. And in box two, you need to put the taxpayer identification number. So you need to put the uh, the payer's nine digit number. Don't add any hyphens here. Okay. Line three, you need to actually uh, decide whether you want uh, to file information returns electronically or paper. So you want to put an X in, in electronic. So use a separate form 8809 for each method. And uh, line four is, is also very important because if you are requesting an extension for more than one payer filer, you want to enter the total number of payer file, payers filers and you need to atta attach a tap list of names and tax identification numbers. If sending an individual form 8809 for each request don't enter anything here. You, you just uh, leave that that um, box empty. Moving on here, we have uh, number six. You need to check only the boxes that apply. So you want to check here because you are thinking about 1099. Uh, you need to put a, a check in uh, the second row, 1099, where it says 1099. That's all you need. So where you have 1097, 1098, 1099. 33, 39, um, 39, 22. So actually it's the third row, my fault. Third row where it says 1099 neck. Just click on that one. And number seven, line seven, you have to put here basically uh, if you're requesting an extension for forms W2 or 1099 neck, or if you checked the box on line five, you must beat one of the following criteria. So here you need to actually explain why you're asking for an extension, right? So if, if the filers suffered a catastrophic event in a federally declared disaster area that made the filer un unable to resume operations or made necessary records unavailable, check that one. Or, or if you have a fire casualty or, or a, a natural disaster 
that affected the operation of your company, check that one. Or if there is a death or a serious illness or unavoidable absence of the individual responsible for filing the information returns affected the operation of the filer, you're going to check that. If the filer, if the company, your company is in the first year of establishment, put that. Or the filer did not receive data on the payee statements, such as uh, Schedule K1, Form 1042S, or the statement of sick pay required under Section 31. 6051 3-A1 in time to prepare an actuary information return. So the bottom line here is you have to choose, you have to check the form that applies to your situation. So you tell the uh, IRS why you were late in the first place and why you want the the uh, the agency to grant you the extension. And just sign, put the title and put the date. One thing I also want to say and this is very important. If you make an error there are ways to correct them. Don't panic. So if you make an error, check for errors before you submit the forms to the IRS. So common errors in completing 1099 forms include using the form for the wrong year, sending the form to the wrong person or company, and failing to include all requested information. So you can simply correct the error if you make a mistake in completing a 1099 NAC form and if you discover it before you submit the form to the IRS. Otherwise, you must submit a corrected 1099 NAC form and you want to check the corrected box, the corrected box at the top of the new form and be sure to change form 1096 if the, cor the, correct, uh, the correction affects your total on this transmittal form. All right. So the uh, the general purposes of uh, the general instructions about the form, the the form eighty eight oh nine, are pretty are pretty straightforward. So this form is used to request an initial or additional extension of time to file only the forms shown on line six for the current tax year, including ten ninety nine neck. And uh, if you are a payer or a filer who need more time to file information returns with the IRS, you can sh you can file this form. And uh, extension may be requested online by completing a filling form at 809 through the FIRE system. And you go to fire.www.fire.irs.gov and you get an automatic 30-day extension, right? And remember that this is not um, the automatic 30 day extension is not available for form 1099 NEC that you have to send it like, uh, you know, manually acknowledgements are automatically displayed online if the request is made by the due date of the return. And uh, one thing that you have to understand is that a list that contains names and tins cannot be attached to the filling form at the night. You cannot attach anything. You can also actually get an extension electronically through the fire system in a file formatted according to the specifications in publication 1220 or you can just do uh, through paper form 8809 so you mail the form to the address um, to the address that i'm going to give you later on now you are encouraged the iris encourages filers and payers to re to submit their request electronically and remember that uh, as i said I, I think i just said this a few minutes ago there are no automatic extension requests for Forms W-2 or 1099 NEC. A request must be submitted on paper with line 7 completed and signed by the filer, transmitter, or person duly authorized to sign a return. Again, as I said a little bit throughout the show, the IRS wants to control, wants to monitor the number of 1099 NEC available or outstanding for a particular filer. So where, where to file? You want to send the Form 8809 to... Department of the Treasury, Internal Revenue Service Center, and it's uh, and it's in uh, Ogden, Utah, 8420010020. So we're, we'll put the address on the screen right now. You can see it. Department of the Treasury, Internal Revenue Service Center, Ogden, or Utah, 84201. All right, folks, this is it for today's conversation. I really want to thank you for your attention. Just going to quickly recap here. I was talking to you about uh, IRS Form 1099 NEC to, uh, line by line instructions, how to fill out Form 1099 NEC non employee compensation. So I spoke about, uh, I defined for you 1099 uh, the tax form. I also defined 1099 uh, the uh, 1099 NEC form. How to, fi how to fill out Form 1099. I gave you example for 1099 example for small business owners, 
1099 example for independent contractors I gave you how to fill out form 1099 next step by step gather the required information fill in the form 1099 neck line by line I spoke to you about where to get form 1099 the neck submit copy of uh, submit copy a to the IRS submit copy B to the independent contractor submit uh, form 1099 6 no, sorry 1096 you need to check if you need to uh, submit 1099 forms uh, basically um, with your state you need to understand how to file 1099s online and you need to know when 1099s are due and also some information about missing the 1099 f filing deadline thanks so much for your attention i really appreciate it i will see you next time but until then remember stay marvelous <laughs>